So, Father, we come before you and we thank you. We ask, dear God, that you will just let your Holy Spirit be the teacher here, the guide. I have done my studies, but this is not about one man's study. This is about what your word says and bringing truth to the table. So, God, I pray that you will just bless the time. And we do ask for your Holy Spirit's guidance here as we seek to look at this tradition that we would have held so dear and to know what it is you are saying to us. So bless the time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For those who didn't know what we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to be talking about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But in particular, we are going to go into what we call uncharted waters because we, many Christians around the world for centuries, have believed this view of Jesus dying on a Friday and raising on a Sunday morning, eh? early Sunday morning. That's been a traditional view for a long time. But then there is this verse that we will come to in a moment that says that Jesus was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And if we are to take that literally, the Friday, Sunday, death, the crucifixion and resurrection story will not fit three days and three nights. No matter what you try to do, <laughs> it will not fit. It doesn't add up. And so we're going to be looking at that tonight and to see what the Holy Spirit says. Is there something we need to know? You know have we been following a tradition that really has not been, you know, accurate. Now, let me say this before going any further, too. This does not, if after we are through with the study, you change your view, it does not do anything to the doctrine of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, let's make that very clear. Let's make that very clear, because I don't want us to get lost in it. We're really just talking about the when, but the when is, has been a, a major tradition for a long time. And so, the doctrine that Jesus died and rose again stands true. We're not questioning that doctrine. But we do want to be able to do justice to what this says in Scripture. So, you guys ready? All right. And please note that at any point you have a question or comment, I would definitely, no matter how silly you feel, please, this is where the questions are going to help us and others. And I also welcome anyone who has a view that I missed or so, because they want to get to the bottom of this. We want to, so I'm very open. So online people, get ready to unmute your mics and interact or to type in-house, get ready. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How I'm going to start this off is that I'm going to start this off by reminding you looking at the traditional view. Pastor Evans, next slide please. The traditional view. Alright? I call it the third day theory. This is the, 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 the traditional view that Jesus died and was buried on a Friday and rose on the third day on a Sunday. All right? This is what we, most of us, believe, the traditional view. I'm starting with familiar territory. All right? Please note that the usage of the term third day occurs approximately 13 times in the New Testament. And you could pop up that next slide to show them, you know, just some of the verses. The idea that Jesus, you know, will be killed and raised again the third day. Matthew. And the third day he shall be raised. And the third day he shall be raised again. The third day, the third day, the third day. Thirteen verses in the New Testament use this phrase, third day. That he'll be killed and raised again the third day. The third day he shall rise again. The third day he shall rise again. The third day, and so forth, and so forth. So, if we work with this, let me start with, this is the reason why I start with familiar grounds. Because I don't think that somebody has deceived us. I just think that... And I won't say that yet. I don't want to give away anything. I just think that um, in another sense, because of what we see in Scripture, maybe we have never gone deeper and done further homework. 
Because the third day view at face value actually would prove for some people that he rose on a Sunday. For instance, if you believe that he died on a Friday, the third day is a Sunday. If you don't get that, let me go back to yesterday was the first day of April. No, sir? Today is the second day of April. And tomorrow will be the third day of April. All right? And so it doesn't have to be one full day tomorrow for it to be called the third day of April. No, sir? So once it turns 1201, we have entered into the third day of April. Am I right? Yes. So that is one of the reasons why some people say he died on Friday, raised on the Sunday, because it's the third day. Another reason why some people, the familiar um, view, the traditional view, is that, yes, this is a fact we're stating from now. Jesus did die a day before the Sabbath. True? That is a fact. I don't have to pull out scriptures for you. You know that, don't you? Because they had to take his body off the cross because Sabbath was a coming. Had to be off the cross before 6 o'clock. Because the next day was a Sabbath. That is a fact. So we already can establish that Jesus Christ died a day before the Sabbath. The issue is that many of us have assumed that that Sabbath day is Saturday. <laughs> because most of us only know one Sabbath. And so the traditional view is steeped on the idea that must have been a Friday because the Bible states that he died and the next day was a Sabbath. They had to take him down. I want us to know, look at the possibility of some other things. Pop that next slide up, Pastor Evans, because nevertheless, next slide, Nevertheless, if you believe that Jesus died on a Friday and rose on a Sunday morning, this is the problem. <laughs> it doesn't add up. It doesn't compute. This is the problem. Quickly, Pastor Evans, pop up Jonah 1 verse 17. Jonah 1 verse 17. Jonah 1 verse 17. Read that out for me, please. Jonah 1 verse 17. Read it out aloud, please. If you read that verse for the first time, would you take the three days and three nights literally? Would you? All right. So we're establishing something here. We have no reason to believe that this is symbolic, figurative, or otherwise. No, sir? The Bible says that Jonah was in the belly of a fish, which um, Matthew will tell us a whale, all right? Three days and three nights. Go back to the slide, Brother Evans, Pastor Evans, Matthew 12, verse 40. Jesus references this. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. If we took the Jonah passage literally, we should take this literally because he references a literal passage. He says the same time frame that Jonah was in the fish's belly. And if you take that literally, we should take him literally. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. So Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> we have a challenge. For if you believe the traditional view, it does not compute. So something is missing. Something needs to be rectified. So there is a non-traditional view, which I'd like to propose to you called the three days and three nights theory. We looked at the third day theory, but the truth is a Friday to Sunday does not align with Matthew 12, 40. So, Next slide past everyone. Let's look at the three days and three nights theory. All right? 
This is the non, watch this now, no. New days you're seeing all together, I know. I'm telling you where I'm going right away. This is the non traditional view that Jesus died and was buried on a Wednesday and rose on a Saturday in order to fulfill the three days and three nights time frame. Totally different days from what we are used to. However, before you knock it, listen to it. One thing is for certain, it's not the days you're used to, not the Friday and the Sunday morning, but it certainly fulfills the three days, three nights theory. Because you have Wednesday night, you have Thursday night, and you have Friday night. And if I'm able to convince you from Scripture that Jesus rose on a Saturday, then he would have fulfilled three full days and three full nights. Wow! So what do I have to bring to the table? Feel free to listen, lean in first, but at any time you're not getting something, understanding something, feel free to raise your hand, challenge it, poke loopholes in the theory, because we are, are already poking loopholes in the traditional theory, because Friday and Sunday doesn't cut it with the Matthew 12 verse. So there must be another explanation. So, let's go. Next slide, Pastor Evans. Here are some things you need to note. During that time, that week when Jesus died, there were two Sabbaths in that week. You can do your own research. Go, go online, do your own research, and, and, and check on the Jewish calendar, Jewish timeline, Jewish activities. This is recorded in history. The week that Jesus died, there were two Sabbaths in that week. One Sabbath day was on Thursday, which we will look at in a moment, which is otherwise called the high day. Yes. And then the other Sabbath day was on Saturday, which is the regular Sabbath. We have attached the regular Sabbath to his crucifixion, but it does not line up with three days and three nights. Am I making sense so far? So far? Let's bring out some more. Next slide, Pastor. Let us talk about this high day Sabbath. Luke 23, 52 to 54 describes Jesus' burial and clearly states that Jesus died and was buried on a preparation day. All right? You see the verse 54 right there below. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew near, or drew on, meaning it drew near. So, remember the fact we have established. Whether you think it is a Saturday Sabbath, or whether you think it's a Thursday Sabbath, the fact we have established is that Jesus died before a Sabbath day, the next day. So, preparation day, by the way, is the day before a Sabbath. Good? With me so far? So, he, he died and was buried on a preparation day, the day before a Sabbath day, which was also, the Sabbath day was also called a high day. The phrase, the Sabbath drew on, shows it was getting very near to sunset. Look with me below, John 19, 31 says, The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and they, that they might be taken away. And you know the rest that was going to happen. When they went to Jesus, he was already dead. But it says here in stronger bold red that the day that is going to be coming up, the Sabbath day, is called a high day. It's a high day. Next slide, Pastor. Let us flesh out what high day is. A high day is a special annual Sabbath. A high day is an annual Sabbath, not the weekly, regular Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. High Sabbath was the first day of unleavened bread. Guess what was happening just before? Passover had ended. Following Passover would be the feast of the unleavened bread. Jesus had the Passover meal. Remember, Jews are very strict on observing their various feasts and so forth and activities. 
Passover has ended and the Jewish calendar stipulates that the next thing that was going to come is the Sabbath, I'm um, sorry, is the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. But notice that the Bible, John 19, 31 states and calls it not even a feast, it's called it a Sabbath. And it says it's just a high Sabbath. You want to know what the word high means there? The word high, I could, I, some of you will remember this word. The, the word high comes from the Greek word megas. Remember that, that word megas? That was used to describe Jesus as the high priest and the most high. And also what megas means? Megas means that it is huge, great, large. In other words, another translation would say it like this. That day that is to come was a special Sabbath. Not a regular Sabbath. Am I making sense so far? All right? The preparation day was there. The next day was called a high Sabbath, a special Sabbath. Not a normal Sabbath. All right? The first day of unleavened bread fell on Thursday during that time. During that time. The, the, that meant Wednesday was the preparation day for the high Sabbath. So the high day Sabbath refers to a special Sabbath day required by a feast observance regardless of the day of the week upon which it falls. In other words, if you go back in time and the, the, day, the high Sabbath day, which is a Thursday, if you go back to that day and then fast, fast forward to the next year, high Sabbath would be Friday and the other year it would be Saturday. In other words, each year is going to be a different year. Sorry, day. You get me? So, in that time, they have been doing this for years, you know. So, it is going to do its round seven days a week each year. Uh, did I say that right? <laughs> did I say that right? Every year, you, sorry, not seven days a week, but every year it's going to fall on the next day, just like Christmas would fall on a Monday, then a Tuesday, and so forth. Am I making sense? All right? So, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is always a high day, Sabbath. According to scriptures, and I won't, you can always take a picture of this and read this yourself. Exodus 12, 14 to 17, Leviticus 23, 1 to 8, that speaks of this um, holy convocation. The, first, the feast of the unleavened bread states that they must um, observe it as a holy convocation, like a holy Sabbath. And it states that, listen, um, when the first Sabbath unleavened bread feast comes on, they're going to eat unleavened bread for seven more days. So the Thursday was the first, which matches the Bible's testimony that the day after Jesus' death was a Sabbath. Because the fact is that it, after his death, the day following was a Sabbath. So the first day of unleavened bread is an annual Sabbath or a holy day. And that time it was a holy Thursday. Does that, does that sound familiar to you? You ever wonder why it's they call it Holy Thursday. There are other reasons why some people say they call it Holy Thursday. No. But what I, what I realize is that we have called Holy Thursday, Good Friday. We don't even know what we call Saturday, but Easter Sunday. Holy Thursday in itself could very well be a, um, what it meant back then. A holy day because it was a high day, a holy day, a holy Sabbath. You with me so far? You with me so far? If you have any questions, let me just say this as well. I've been reading this for days, researching this for days. If you don't get this, that's fine. It took me a while to get it, reread it, and process it. So I'm saying, if you're not getting it, raise your hand and ask. If you want to poke holes in the theory right now, poke holes in it. That is how we're going to learn because there's somebody processing it now and I get it, you know. So I'm saying to you, poke holes in it. Ask the question which will help to clarify we good so far? But there are more than one reasons why this three-day, three-night thing is going to work out, based on what we're saying. But, yes, 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 yes. Uh, very good question. And I, he, uh, since a short question, because uh, I was going to get to it, but let's deal with it now. What time does the Jewish day start? Which is very, very important. The Jewish day starts from Six in the evening to six the other evening, especially the Sabbath. And this is the issue here. Do you ever wonder, did you ever wonder why Jesus, why God put it this way? Genesis chapter one. And the evening and the morning was there? 
And the evening and the morning was the second day. And the evening and the morning was the third day. He didn't say on the morning and the evening. So the Jewish, glad you asked, the Jewish calendar, the Jew, Jewish lunar time, they operate on a different setting from us. But it, when you look at it, they, got, they actually got it from God. Evening and the morning is constituted as one day. So if you go back, because I might not remember to come to it, so I'll come to it now. Because we need to still rectify the third day statement that's found in 13 times in the scripture, I know. So, if you are already holding to this view, let's work the match out. If evening of one into, into the next day is one day, so let's go now. Wednesday from 6 to Thursday 6 is, count with me, one day, we call it the first day, as Jesus says, evening and morning is the first day. Thursday from 6 to Friday, 6 is the second day. Friday from 6 to Saturday, 6 is the third day. The Bible in the New Testament says he rose on the third day. So the idea is a full day. Because the idea is that third day. Evening and morning was the first. Evening and, you know, the idea is that. All right? So, indeed, I'm glad you asked that. All right? And remember, the reason why we would have had to accept this is that if we then move to Saturday and Sunday morning, I want you to remember that that will be a fourth day. And the Bible said it's, he rose on the third day. And remember that it's three days and three nights. So it couldn't, if you're accepting a Wednesday burial, Wednesday death, three nights, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If he were to go up to Sunday morning and raise Sunday morning, that would be four nights. Doesn't add up either. Am I making sense so far? Feel free to ask more questions. Feel free to challenge it. Feel free to say what I am not seeing. All right? This is how we're going to crack this case, you know. Next point. Next slide. The ladies, this is very important, you know. The ladies observed both Sabbaths. The ladies observed both Sabbaths. They went to buy spices after the first Sabbath ended. Because the Bible, we're going to look at it in a moment. Because the Bible says they went to buy spices after the Sabbath. And after the Sabbath, they went to buy spices to, you know, um, put on Jesus' body. You know? So they went to buy spices after the first Sabbath ended and bought the spices, possibly on a Friday. Because if Thursday was a no-movement day, and it ended at 6, Chances are, after six, they're not going to get spices in the first place. So they would have to wait until the Friday to buy the spices. But then the scripture says, they, then they rested on the second Sabbath, Saturday, and went to the tomb early Sunday morning. Now, I am already certain that some of you didn't get that. So next slide, Pastor Evans, we're going to bring that out into details. By comparing details in both Gospels, where Mark tells us, the women bought spices after the Sabbath, and Luke relates that they prepared the spices before resting on the Sabbath. We can see that two different Sabbaths are mentioned. So Mark 16, 1 states that the women bought spices. Let me read it out. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Luke 23, 56 says, And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now that phrase must not be left out. According to the commandment means that they followed it to the T. In other words, let's plug in back the Friday, Sunday thing. Why would this not work for a, for a one Saturday? Because if they were to go, if they were to buy the spice, it says they, they bought it after the Sabbath. So that means that Mary and, and the others had to go after six, get the spice, 
And the Bible says they went early in the morning, no sir? Sunday morning, uh, early in that morning, sorry. Yes, it's Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. We know about that, first day of the week. They went there. If it were true that they were, that they, they bought it after the Sabbath, which the Bible says, there's another piece that tells us that they rested. Look, verse, look, Luke 3, Luke 23. They returned and prepared spices and, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So let me just put it again. If it were Saturday, they would have to buy it. The Bible said they bought it after the Sabbath. They would have to go buy it sometime Saturday evening. But guess what the Bible said? The Bible said that when they came home, they rested for the Sabbath according to the commandment. It means that the next day that they chose to rest would, should have been a Sabbath. Am I making sense to you? The next day that they chose to rest was not a Sabbath. It was a Sunday. And the Bible didn't mince words by saying that according to the commandment. It means that they followed the six to six. It's not like they went after, sat, after six on a Saturday and just took a sabbatical nap. The phrase says they, they did so and rested according to the commandment. So the best explanation that fits both scriptures is that after buying the spices likely on a Friday because the Bible says they bought it after Sabbath which the first Sabbath is Thursday no movement day they could not do anything on Thursday so they went on the Friday bought the spices and then it says the ladies prepared them for use on the body of Jesus and then they rested on the Saturday and went to the tomb very early Sunday morning when they got there, what did they see? An empty tomb. Again, we might have made an assumption that because Jesus, there was an empty tomb Sunday morning, that he rose Sunday morning. <laughs> he had whole day Saturday to rise because he completed the three nights. Friday, Thursday, and Wednesday night. So anytime Saturday, Jesus could have risen. Which is why, remember the Bible says, when it was yet dark, they went to the tomb and it was already empty. So Jesus would have risen at that point. Questions, comments? Yes, go ahead. Um, you said that, that anytime Saturday, it couldn't be anytime Saturday because their day was, their Sabbath would have been from Friday evening to Saturday the next day, 6 o'clock, right? So Jesus would have been risen then between any time from 6 in the evening, Saturday, to Sunday. So he could have been risen in the night from Saturday up to Sunday. So he, he could all have been right. risen every day, any time. All right, I'm glad you said that part. So let me, let, let me tell you why it can be Saturday night, though. Because that would be a fortnight. That's why I want you guys to interact with it now. If you don't interact with it, you're going to miss something. It cannot be Saturday night, Pat. No, I'm saying you arose that time. Yes, so he but was not if, in the grave. If he, if, if he, all right. If he rose in, anytime you're saying like any, anytime in the morning, Sunday morning, it can be though. Because he would have gone a fortnight. Am I making sense? So that's why I said anytime Saturday. Because if Jesus, if you are understood, tell us, don't worry, don't feel away. If you're not getting it, we're going to go over it. If you are holding true to this theory, let's go back to the beginning. Wednesday, if you believe that Jesus died on a Wednesday, the next day, he, Wednesday night, he would have completed one night. Thursday night, a second night. Friday night, a third night. He cannot go into Sunday morning because the Bible says three days and three nights. So the, the best day of resurrection has to be a Saturday. Now feel free to debate when, but I am just saying, and when any time Saturday can be Sunday morning because that would be a fortnight he would have completed. And the Bible says three days, three nights. Are you guys with me? Yes. Still counting? <laughs> Wednesday, one night. Thursday, one and second night. Friday, third night. So 
Anytime after Friday night, Jesus is ready to fulfill prophecy, which says that he's been the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Yeah, so yes. it, it cannot be a Saturday night. He cannot go into a Saturday night then, because that would be before. Yeah, yes, yes. Or if you want to split hairs, I'm certain it cannot be a mo Sunday morning then. If you want to split hairs, he didn't, he, if, he, if he rose on a Sunday morning with this theory, it means that it would be a fortnight. He never went into a fortnight. So it could be any time Saturday. It could be any time. So if, he, if, if you want to say, well, he, he rose sometime Saturday night. Again, you know, guys, I want you to remember that he would have completed his days and nights. So Saturday at any point would be his time. Again, we can't, I cannot answer that for you now. So let's not even try to go where we don't know. Am I making sense? We don't know when. If you are holding true to this so far, we don't know when Saturday but I'm certain that it is not Sunday morning. Let's say Sunday morning begins, what, 12.01? Jesus would have had to rise before 12.01. Am I making my, myself clear? Because if he, if he arose 12.01 Sunday morning, he would have spent four nights in the tomb. And the Bible says, count it, three days, three nights. Let me just say this. There are people who wanted to make it Sunday morning so much because this is a traditional view that is being <laughs> challenged. And I saw one commentator say it this way. He said it this way. That Jesus died. He understood now that we have to align with three days, three nights. So one commentator aligned it by saying that he died on Thursday night. Thursday. So you count Thursday night. You go on Friday night, Saturday night, and he rose Sunday morning. Here's the problem with that one. Because the person did acknowledge that there are two Sabbaths. And there's only place for two Sabbaths if you count it from Thursday. And the two Sabbaths will be Friday and Saturday. But please remember, the Bible said the ladies bought the spice after the Sabbath. And rested on one. If it is a back-to-back -back Sabbath you're thinking of, which is a Friday, Saturday. Let's say Holy Thursday you're thinking that he died. That means you have two back-to-back -back Sabbaths and they would not have space, time, nor opportunity. Because Friday and Saturday are locked out days, you know. Am I making sense? No spice will be available. You cannot do merchandising or buying or purchasing on the Sabbath days. So the Friday and Saturday does not hold true. They still needed space between to buy after one Sabbath, rest on one, and go there. Yes, Mr. Clark. Um, Pastor, yes. I, I agree with you. Yes. Right? Because I have looked into it and... That's what it speaks of. The, the second Sabbath is a day of atonement, and the Jews tend to do a lot of preparation for it. What I think in tradition, what we you know, have done over the years, is that because the scripture said to us that Mary came the first day. Yes. And we assume that Christ rose. Yes, on that exactly. Day and that, that's what. And we, we have to understand scripture when you study it and get into it just as if you look at genesis yeah and it tells you that god created heaven and earth and all of that but but he did not tell you how on the sixth day what god did on the sixth day mm -hmm. but if you go further in the book of genesis it begins to tell you what god did on the sixth day that adam was also created adam named the animals and so god looked at adam and said it was not good yes but in if you read chapter one you will not see that. Yeah. And you will say, okay, Adam came later or what's the case. No, no. Adam was created on the sixth day when you go back. So sometimes when we read the scriptures, yes. we, you have to have the Holy Spirit to lead you yes. and direct you because the, the, some of the things are not fleshed out there. You, you, for example, you, you know, might see something tells you that they went fishing. Yes. And you say, okay, they went fishing. But there are a lot of things that was done before yes. they went fishing and what, you know, put them yeah. there. 
Yeah. But when you study yeah. the whole um, burial yeah. and resurrection, yeah. what you're saying is true. Yeah. That is true. It's true. Yeah. And because also, when you looked at in John, it tells you that even the body of Jesus, yeah. they embalmed the body. Yes. Yes. Joseph and Amartya and Nicodemus, they embalmed the body. Mm -hmm. And if you look, but their embalm, embalming of the body wasn't done like the Egyptians. Yeah, yes. They're taking out the organs or things like that. Yeah. Because they did that to Joseph, they did that to Jacob in Egypt when they're bringing them out just to embalm the body that yeah. he could carry them and so forth. Yeah. So all spices and all of those things were done. But mm -hmm. here it comes again, it tells that the ladies go and purchase and that will tell you that they did not know of the fact that Jesus' body was already, there was Risen. spices and all of that. Yeah. Oh, spices, right. Spices, in, right, indeed, spices. Indeed. Because yeah. that was already done by yeah. Joseph and Arnty and so forth. Yeah. So as you read the scripture, you find certain things comes out and it come more clear to My problem is this, and I want to say this, is that when we look at scripture and we find this, and we find that we have been traveling along with tradition. We tend not want to break the tradition. Yep. You know, yep. and I will say even the whole matter, and now I'll say it now that when we look at scripture, the whole matter of worship. Worship. Yeah. The unsaved cannot worship God. Yeah. The Bible tells you that. Mm -hmm. And when you come to worship, it's like we are trying to get the unsaved to worship God. We ourselves cannot even stand in his presence because of sin. We have to confess our sin. We have to make ourselves right. The scripture tells us we have to worship in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. You know, but because of tradition, and we have hold it that everybody comes in and worship. Everybody comes in. If you go and check scripture and read, it is there. Yes. It's good they come and observe our worship. Mm -hmm. but they cannot worship God. Yes. Rina, you have a mic? I see you putting your hand up. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Sister Rina. I, I was thinking, yes. I think one of the things that um, get us a little mix up, when he said the ladies went to the tomb Sunday morning, it was empty. It yes. Did not, it did not say rose on the Sunday morning. No. Exactly. It was empty. Empty. Empty already. would have risen before. Exactly. the Bible don't say it was risen exactly. Sunday morning. Exactly. Exactly. So just come home to me and say that is yes. Business, yes. Up, so. and, and, and I'm going to tell you something, guys. You will not see it in scripture that the Bible says that he rose on the first day of the week. You're not going to find it. We would have made many assumptions because of the traditional view in our heads. Because of the traditional view. And, and, and I read widely to the point where when I was reading some stuff, now I could easily refute it. Like, for instance, those who stuck to the traditional view would slap that verse on it to say, um, Jesus rose on a Sunday. And when you re read it, I said, after reading what I read, I said, no, it didn't say that. It said on the first day of the week, they went there. But what did they find when they went there? An empty tomb. So it doesn't mean that he rose on the Sunday morning. <laughs> because it was already empty. <laughs> and remember, the Friday, Sunday cannot align with Matthew 12, 40. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, Pat. All right. I'm back to what I'm saying. Yes. It could not have been any time Saturday. He rose. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. First of all, a Saturday is the day of rest, right? Which yes. means that no activity, that's one. Yes. So when we go back and we're going to count, right? Let's say it's still the Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that their day is from night to the six next to day, six, right? right. right. Mm -hmm. So it's Wednesday night, yes. Thursday night, Friday night, right? Yes. Okay. So the day now part of it would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes. That's the day part. Yes. So the, the three days and three nights would have been taken care of, which yes. means that the Saturday, he would, he would still yes. be yes. down. Yes. So it means that he would have been risen any time during the night after the Sabbath. After six. Any time after six. Any time after six. And before 12. Whatever. Mo I no. Listen. Yes. No. On a serious yes. note. That's true. Yes. So yes. that's fine. That's yes. good reasoning there. Right. That's why I want you guys to interact with me now. Anytime between 6 and 12. Yes. Because if, it, if he rose 12 or 1 Sunday morning, that would make it a fourth night. 
That's fear, Pat. Very good reasoning. So we can assume that anytime after six on Saturday, and many, many scholars said it to you know. So I like that you said that because I just wanted to be safe by saying anytime, but fine. I agree with what you're saying. I wanted to be safe, but me know say it's not 12 or 1 or anytime after Sunday morning because that would be a fourth night. Please use that as the formula, you know. Anytime you get confused, use it as the formula. Three days, three nights. All right, good so far? Here's my third point. I, I, I've looked at the idea of there are two Sabbaths. I've looked at the idea of the ladies and the spices and the two Sabbaths they observe. My third point, Pastor Evans, the Greek word for Sabbath, many people don't know this. In fact, there are only are a few Bible versions that put it this way. But the Greek word for Sabbath, which is Sabbaton, can mean one Sabbath day or the interval between two Sabbaths. Wow, Sister Grace have a wow look on her face. Check it out for yourself. Check it out online. The same word that you see, Sabbath, Sabbaton, can mean either one day or the interval between two Sabbaths, which was what happened on that week of Jesus' crucifixion. All right? So in other words, Sabbath can be used in a singular sense or plural sense, depending on the context. Are you guys with me? Any questions, comments? For I'm about to wrap up and summarize. And if you were left behind, here's what I've said. With a little more information. It is very likely that on a Tuesday evening after sunset, Jesus and his disciples kept the Passover. Afterward, they went to the garden and Jesus was captured. Wednesday morning, he was brought before Pilate and sentenced to death. He was crucified at 9 a.m. Now, this is a fact, no, because you guys are supposed to know your Bible, that there are some specifics that were told to us, and sometimes, and this is not one that you have to have a, an opinion over, it's fact. Jesus was definitely crucified at 9 a.m. The Bible says that. And then Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m., remember, we looked at it the last time, at 3 p.m., it told us, all right, at 3 p.m., Jesus died. Remember, that's fact. The issue is for people day. Joseph begged for the body from Pilate very near sunset because had to hurry. Had, they had to hurry to get him out of the cross in the first place and then had to hurry to get him buried before 6 o'clock because a Sabbath was a coming. All right? Wednesday evening, Jesus was buried. Thursday was a high day or an annual Sabbath, the first day of unleavened bread. And they ceased from work. So in other words, nobody did anything on Thursday. Huh? All together. Friday was the weekly preparation day. And the women bought and prepared spices and an, an, an ointment to properly complete the burial of Jesus. Saturday, they rested on the regular Sabbath. Sunday morning, near sunrise, the ladies came to the tomb to find that Jesus was already risen on Saturday. All dates, days are accounted for in red. He died on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, you know what happened. Then on Friday, you know what happened. And then on Saturday, he rose. Therefore, completing the idea of three days and three nights. Wednesday to Thursday, the first day. Thursday to Friday, the second day, and the second night. Friday, did I do that right? Friday to Saturday, the third day, and third night. All right, was included in Friday night, but also the third day. And this computes with the scripture, New Testament passages we've looked at, that Jesus rose on the third day. Questions, comments? Yes. 
Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that, and that's fine. At least, here's what is, is interesting. At least you are seeking to align with three days and three nights when you say, of the view that it's a Thursday. Because, and he rose on a Sunday morning. At least you're aligning with that. There, the traditional view of Friday and, and Sunday morning doesn't compute and align with scripture. And what has be, been the popular view? That one. Doesn't align with scripture. For if we take Matthew 12, 40, literally, sorry to tell us <laughs> that, that that view is incorrect. All right? However, let's go back to where we started. This does nothing to alter the doctrine of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And coming to your brother Prout, we are free to celebrate his death all year round and his resurrection anytime we want. The issue now that I would want us to be aware of, two issues coming to you, I don't haven't forgotten you, that from now on, when you hear me say some things, I am no longer going to say, Sunday morning early, he rose. I am sorry, because I am now informed. And you're not going to hear me say, Friday, he died. You will hear me say, he died. You will hear me say, he's risen. That's the best thing to do. The second issue is that you will be seeing, this changes nothing for the traditionalists. You will be seeing and hearing it. Even, even what we have prepared past events. We're going to, on Friday, Sundays are coming. In other words, I'm just saying that, remember, the tradition is so steep that you're going to see, you're going to see that still being purported. But at least in my head, I know what I believe. It changes nothing about his death and his resurrection, but it changes how I address the dates of his death and resurrection. Yes, Deacon Proud. Yes, um, I hear you, and, and it's, 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 it's in very interesting. But this would dispel the whole notion for Sunday worshipers as opposed to Sabbath keepers when we say, well, we worship on the Lord's Day, recognizing then that, um, yes, we recognize that the Sabbath would be the Saturday, but we look towards the Lord's Day that he rose on the Sunday. So that would dispel all of that and say so we can't call it that, like that on the Lord's Day all when right. he rose. That's fine. But... One thing is for certain, I'm glad you mentioned that, it does not negate Sunday worship. Because there's another way, because that was one of the strong points Sunday worshipers use. You know, he rose on a Sunday, so we have church on a Sunday. But don't worry, we can prove that easily. The New Testament churches were already meeting on a first day. Upon the first day of the week, Paul says to the church at Corinth, when you meet for service, Collect this offering. So the church was already meeting on the first day of the week. And then all you need to do is to bring other passages like Romans 14 and Colossians and so forth that says that any day. So we, we don't have to go back to this, the, the, the resurrection Sunday argument. Paul already gave everybody license to worship on any day. In other words, if you want to have a Tuesday church, Romans 14 covers that. Right? So we worship on a Sunday because there's liberality. And freedom to worship on any day we want. We don't judge people who worship on a Tuesday. We don't judge people who worship on a Saturday. Because any day. This is what Christ did. He made all things new in that way. So they can be proven another way. Alright? Good. Yes. Um, I think, you know, looking at it. The, the thought came to my mind that the... We know that Christ rose, we know everything, and we worship and with in all sincerity. 
you know, we worship and that. And when I don't see where I think we should change, because in truth of fact, we weren't doing anything that wasn't real you know, on our part. Because if you look at even Christmas and so forth. Christmas. Right, rather, that's yeah. another thing that yeah. we could say, okay, 25th, yeah, in the world's born, don't, 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 you, yes. know, don't you know, worship money 20 because he wasn't born on the 25th. We continue to do that, but we know exactly. that he wasn't born on the 25th of yeah, December. Yeah, exactly. So, for me, having Good Friday service, having, you know, Sunday morning service, and I, I don't see the problem right. in that because we know of a fact. Mm. You understand? And we're not, and I believe that who, the, the, the I, I want to use the word the forefather, those who set it, in that way, I think they, they had good intention. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they had good intention, so they weren't looking about the, the three days. Yes, business. they had good intention. Yeah, you understand? They weren't looking about the three days because they weren't yeah. looking about that we need to rec recognize. Yeah. You know, is death, burial, and resurrection. And these were the days they, they put aside as it were that yeah. we should, you know? Yeah. In line. So I'm now going to say what I wanted to say earlier. Now that you know what you know what you know. The people who gave us the traditional view had good intentions. It's just that somebody didn't do their homework. They didn't go deeper. Because this is deep stuff, you know. To find out that the word Sabbath has two, you know, two Sabbath, to find out it's deep stuff. Somebody didn't do their homework. They had good intentions. Here's what they did. As we said before, what happened, that's why I gave you familiar grounds first. They assumed that there was only one Sabbath. And the fact is that Jesus died before a Sabbath. And they assumed that that Sabbath was Saturday. So they didn't go any further. They had good intentions. So they say, but again, this is why. Why did I do all of this? Not to make us feel despondent and say, I'm not even going to try to change anything, the culture and the tradition in that regard. In fact, I can't. It's too steeped in the culture of the world. I can't change it. But I wanted us to be accurate because for years, Matthew 12, 40 has plagued me. And I'll be confession. I avoided it for years. Because I didn't know how to explain it. That Jesus would be three days and three nights. I avoided it for years. I remember it's either Pat or Charmian a few years back text me and say, what does this mean? Three days, three nights. I'm like, Lord, I don't know. I don't want to know. But then I remember in 2020 when I did something to try to prove the traditional view and it went out and a deacon from another church called me and was trying to explain this three days, three nights theory to me. I never got it then either. But I said, no, it's time. And if you still don't get it, it's fine. You just need to mull through it and chew over it some more and you will get it. Because one thing you must do if you don't get it is to still measure it with Matthew 1240. Why would I want to accept this theory? Because the Friday, Sunday doesn't match Matthew 1240. Am I making sense? So even if you don't get everything I said, you need to make sure that whatever you believe, that's why I can't fight Brother Dennis here. Brother Dennis said, I believe Thursday, Sunday, at least it matches with three days, three nights. Whatever you decide to believe, make sure it matches with three days, three nights. Am I making sense? Because the traditional view does not. Pastor Evans, I'll give you the last word and we pray and we'll get out of here. Go ahead. And I'm, I, I, I'm looking at it, right? Um, I'm going to mellow through it, but I was actually leaning towards the Thursday, not the, Friday, not the Wednesday or the Friday, the Thursday. But I'm looking at it either way you take it, right? We can still celebrate it as the Sunday because why? That's when they found out. Yeah. That's when Jesus appeared yeah. to appear to them on the Sunday. If he said, yeah. "Hey, I'm risen," so yeah. so, so so even though uh, um we, we we can still say a resurrection on the card. That's when Jesus let it be known and said, yes. "Listen, Indeed. me no longer dead. I'm yeah. here." And it was a Sunday. He started to show himself yeah. to everybody else. Yeah. Uh, uh, um. So. If you want to take it and we still celebrate Re Resurrection Sunday, we can because that's when Jesus said, Indeed. I am risen. And that's when it starts to go out. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. I know some of you are going to want this PowerPoint, so we're going to do two things. Pastor Evans, it's done and it's ready. 
So post it to the website at your earliest convenience, and those who want to personally ask me for it, I'll email it to you. Because some of you are going to need to read it over. If it took me days, maybe I could say even years, because I was dabbling in it a little and just said, I don't understand this. But then I got it. <laughs> and we need to get it. Just in order to be able to, because, and I'll close, there are people who will come to you with Matthew 12, 40. The Adventists, for instance. And they'll say, why you believe a Friday, Sunday, and, what? and you're going to be stumped and say, me no know, I know, me no know. No, you know. They were right. Because Jesus was right. Amen? So therefore, don't be afraid now to embrace it and say, true, yeah, three days and three nights with you. And whatever calendar you believe, whether over, like my brother over here, Thursday, Sunday morning, or Wednesday, Saturday, you know, it, it's okay. Make sure you align with scripture, three days, three nights. That's the main thing. And then, of course, he died, he rose, and that's the main thing. The doctrine doesn't change. Amen? And Jesus, we're so glad you paid the price for us. We're so glad you set us free. You are our Savior and Redeemer. And so we are certain about your death, which has brought new life. And we are certain about your resurrection, which means that we serve a risen Savior. And so God, help us to always take this and run with it. Not the other stuff, but to run with the gospel that Jesus died, buried, and rose again. That's the gospel. Not focus on the when, but on the what. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.